Below the roaring forties in the tumbling seascape of the great southern ocean, the cray fishermen of Tasmania ply their trade. To the west, the 20-foot surge rolling in from South America wastes itself against miles of empty beach and rocky cliff. To the east, the ominous calm of the Tasman Sea. To the north, the deeps of Bass Strait dividing the island from the Australian continent. And to the south, the long grey icy seas that stretch away to Antarctica. Among the countless organisms which inhabit these prolific waters, the ungainly crayfish, little chains from prehistoric times, grazes on marine worms, mollusks or smaller crustaceans in swaying kelp forests. The southern crayfish, Jasus lalandi, is a crustacean, that is, it has an external skeleton. The two principal parts of the crayfish are the cephalothorax, or head and chest, and the tail. The cephalothorax has two pairs of feelers in front and five pairs of long, jointed legs on the underside. The tail is divided into ring-like segments with four pairs of swimmerettes. At the end is a flexible fan, or telson, which consists of a middle piece with two flaps on either side. Shortly after mating, bright orange eggs, about one thirty-second of an inch in diameter, flow from the base of the female's third pair of legs and attach themselves to the swimmerettes. It's believed that the female lays her eggs every twelve months and carries them as berry from four to five months. When the eggs reach maturity, the female crayfish detaches them by brushing her hind legs along the berry. A female 12 inches long may average 100,000 eggs, but such is the mortality rate in the young that only five may reach maturity. During the last weeks, the black eyes are the most prominent part and the larvae can be seen moving within the egg case. When hatched, the young are transparent, one-tenth of an inch long, with a flat body, long legs and large stalked eyes. At this stage it is plankton and at the mercy of its environment. After the plankton stage, the craylet becomes a bottom feeder, about one and a half inches long, shedding its old shell and growing a new one about five times a year for two or three years. A major enemy is the octopus. When it pinions its prey, its suckers grip everywhere, holding the entire carapace in a complete stranglehold. The crayfish's abdominal plates are drawn towards the octopus's mouth and the black tip of the horny beak crunches through the shell and into the flesh. But the fisherman remains the greatest predator of inshore adult crayfish. At the start of the cray season, the pots are loaded aboard. These sturdy pots give many years service, standing the strain of continual shooting and recovering in depths of up to 90 fathoms. The number of pots carried is governed by the size of the boat. 
a boat of 30 tonnes and more than 60 feet long, can carry the maximum of 40 pots. A 20-footer, 15, and so on. In Tasmania, any scale fish caught by line, grab all or fish trap can be used for bait. Red meat is also used, particularly in night fishing. In some pots, an escape hatch is made to allow undersized crayfish to get away before the pot is hauled aboard. Time lapse between shooting and recovering the pots varies according to the area and the time of the year. To control cray fishing in the vast seas surrounding the island and to guard against a very profitable industry being fished out, penalties are severe for taking undersized crayfish or females out of season. A measuring gauge checks the length a minimum of four and a quarter inches from rostrum to the posterior edge of the carapace in males and four inches in females. When undersized crayfish are tossed back into the sea, the shock leaves them stunned for some time. Completely defenseless, they're game for any passing predator. The Fisheries Division of the Tasmanian Department of Agriculture relies on high-speed launches for patrol work and frequently samples catches on the high seas. Detection and apprehension are not the main objectives of the fisheries division. The fisheries research vessel Pengana is equipped with sonar to locate schools of fish, a thermograph for recording water temperatures, 
echo sounder for Craypot location, a two-way radio, and radar for area location. Diving is essential to the division's research work. Photography plays an important part in collecting data for population and migratory studies related to the environment. Field research round Tasmania's coast will show any changes in the numbers and growth rate of the crayfish. Jasus lalandi, the southern crayfish, vital part of Tasmania's fishing industry. His future depends on research, common sense and practical fishing methods for his continued survival.